Hello, everyone. My name is Zhi Chao. I'm a graduate student of Beijing University of Post and Telecommunications. My major research lies on sequential recommender system. Uh, and the, I'm very glad to share our work on the web conference of 2024. The title of our work is Context-Based Fast Recommendation Strategy for Long-User Behavior Sequence in MetaMyMan. So this is the outline of my talk. Uh, in MetaMyMan, performing recommendations for a wide range of service uh, is very crucial, from food delivery to medicine delivery, especially when dealing with, with long sequences. Uh, so in our scenario, uh, user preferences are highly dynamic, deeply influenced by context control factors like location, time, weather, and so on. As shown in the red figure, uh, we could see that in this figure, users' interests in different locations uh, are quite different, and the uh, dining time preference of users at break time, breakfast time is different from that at lunch time and midnight time. Uh, so the existing methods don't fully utilize the context dependent characteristic. Our task is how to automatically identify relevant points from comprehensive user behavior histories uh, based on contexts. Uh, so in this work, we want to find contexts with similar user preferences to the current context, and then filter the points. Uh, note that the process is candidate agnostic. That means we don't need to filter the subsequence for each candidate item. Candidate item. A traditional measure like cosine similar similarity of context embeddings struggle with interpret low inter inter interpretability and embedding quality. Yet we found that representing user preferences within contexts through probability distributions of poi attributes like category or price is more effective. Uh, inspired by this, we use Jensen Shannon divergence to compare preferences across different contexts. The approach offers to better accuracy by representing user preferences. Uh, the left figure is a visualization of the order of distributions over the price and the category dimension. It's calculated by log data and can be viewed as the user's interest in point under the context. Uh, based on the just mentioned similarity mirror, we could calculate the similarity between the target context and uh, the historical context, uh, followed by selecting a subset of similar contexts. Uh, however, it struggles with the context context code start issue and is very sensitive to the quality of selected contexts. Uh, how <coughs> however, we noticed that user preference derived from prolonged user behavior tend to remain stable. Therefore, we introduced the preference prototypes. These prototypes though as the centers in the user preference space, uh, grouping similar contexts. In this figure, circle represents the contexts, while the triangle represents the prototypes. Uh, contexts whose preference closely match the same prototype are considered analogous. Uh, however, due to the limited understanding of the prototypes and the lack of explicit prior knowledge, deriving their, no, deriving their probability distribution across the point attributes directly is not feasible. To compute the JS divergence between prototypes and the contexts, we designed a probabili probability encoder inspired by transfer learning. This encoder could map the latent representation into estimated probability distribution over the point attributes. Uh, in this module, we feed the latent representation into a MLP layer with the sigmoid activation. The MLP's output dimension, output dimension matches the aggregate value counts across all attributes. And the estimated, estimated JS divergence between representation CI and CJ is defined as an equation. And uh, we align the estimated distribution with the ground truth Ground truth JS divergence between contents calculated from log data through the MLC laws. Uh, well, the, with the probability encoder, we could effectively cluster the contexts. However, it missed the temporal dynamics in sequences, especially critical in long sequences. However, traditional models like RN based methods suffer from memory loss, 
and the computational demand of attention, self-attention-based model is very huge. It's huge. Uh, to address these issues, we construct a temporal graph based on the co-occurrence senses or contexts in the user behavior sequence. Uh, yes, like this. Additionally, we use the gamble source math trick to establish connections between contexts and the prototypes with high similarity. <coughs> Uh, and finally, we integrate temporal information into node representations through the graph attention network. And this equation is a uh, gamble sort math trick. Mm, after aggregating node representations, we identify prototypes aligned with the target context by focusing on the user's most recent, recent R activities. We encode users' short-term uh, behaviors through a GRU model. And uh, the L here represents the user's short-term interests. Uh, then assuming that the user's target context is uh, CT, we compute the relation between the prototypes and the target context through this equation, and uh, we, get got, we get ZIT. To ensure the effective training, we employ binary cross entropy loss, as shown in this equation, to surprise the entire process. In the inference stage, uh, for each prototype which CIT is equal to 1, we gather the contexts it, it encompasses. Uh, in this context, we identify and select a subsequence of points the user has, oh, sorry, has interacted with. The selected subsequence is then processed through the target attention. Uh, this is the uh, statistics of our data set in the offline stage. We finally report the CTR AOC and the CTCVR AOC of the model on the test set. Uh, in this section, we compare the performance of our model with uh, different baselines and the variance of our proposed cofas. The overall performance of the <coughs> overall performance is reported in the table, and uh, we have the following observations. Uh, first, performance of enhanced model for long sequences. Uh, perform better than the traditional models, uh, which proves the uh, uh, effectiveness of modeling the long sequences. And uh, second, our model outperforms all baselines by introducing the <coughs> contextual factors. Uh, and the third, uh, removing any module or, or constraint results in a decrease in the model performance, uh, like the red uh, table. Uh, recall that our proposed method the number of prototypes is a hyperparameter. Hyper, hyper in this section, we evaluate the effectiveness of prototypes in our model by altering the number of prototypes. And uh, we could uh, see that the model performs optimal, uh, performs best when the number of prototypes reaches 40. And uh, the performance remains relatively stable at the back of the curve, suggesting that the model robustness with the number of prototypes when the uh, bigger than a subsectic sub threshold. Uh, and third, the model have got the poorest per performance when the number of prototypes is set to one, indicating that a significant can, can drop in effectiveness due to already filtered sequences that filter to capture user interest diversity and evolution. Uh, so in conclusion, in this work, we propose a candidate agnostic method to model long sequences based on contexts. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first attempt to employ contexts in the modeling of long sequence in this domain. Uh, third, we, uh, second, we propose two major technical extensions, probability encoder and the graph-based temporal aggregator. And compare with the last version of our online zero model, our model obtained 4.6% CTR and 4.2% GME promotion. Uh, in the future, we will utilize the rich knowledge and the reasoning of capability of large language model to optimize occupy and contest representations and the streamline of the long sequences. We will also use the recent insights from generative recommendation research to refine long sequence construction methods. That's all for my presentation. Thank you.